I like building things. And uh, I build things at kind of a meta level because what I do now is I build things that allow other people to build things. Um, I spend a lot of time growing up building models, and I've always loved building models. And here we're giving tools to the users where they can build very elaborate models of things that exhibit behavior, uh, which are the kind of models I could never build when I was a kid. I was using plastic and balsa wood. Um, so the idea of building a model that's alive and that exhibits behavior is really fascinating to me. We want to build a world inside the computer that's so lifelike that after a few minutes the user stops thinking of this as a computer game. Uh, they start thinking of it as a little microcosm inside their computer. And then they're thinking about the forces impacting the people in their city or whatnot, and not about the fact that they're playing a game and if they push this button, that happens. So really we're trying to build the believable behavior inside the computer that they can relate to. When the users play our games, they come to the game with a certain set of experiences, certain expectations. They have, for instance, a model of the way cities work in their mind. Uh, when they play our game, what we're in essence trying to do is challenge their model, or perhaps even refine it. So as they play our model of the way a city works, and they compare it to their internal middle model of the way a city works, um, that's in essence what we're really building. We're really building these middle models in our users' minds. Uh, the computer model becomes kind of a compiler for the middle model. This is basically called learning. This is the way learning occurs, is you're comparing your internal model of the world against reality or some other model and refining it. So in most people's situation, they don't have the opportunity to plan a city and see it evolve over decades. Uh, by compressing time and space, we allow them to have that opportunity and therefore allow them to start reevaluating their mental model. And especially you see this with kids, uh, young teenagers. Their models are very malleable and very uh, unformed. And so it's really an eye-opener for them to play these simulations. And then they walk away from the game. And then when they're out in the real world, they start seeing things totally differently. They have a new paradigm for understanding the world. And it's really remarkable to see an eight-year-old play SimCity and then walk away and start noticing zoning in their town. What we're trying to give the user is a a substrate that they can build really neat things with. Um, and then they have an ownership. Uh, they build this thing and it's their city or their ant colony or whatever. And they empathize with it. Because they built it, because they created every little road in that city, they care about what happens to it. And this is a very different dynamic than if you plop them into a world and say blast aliens. Um, you know, so they blast aliens, do they really care? They weren't really that involved to begin with. They're just pulling the trigger and occasionally hitting something. When they actually design something, and it's something that they envisioned, maybe their, you know, it's a, their implementation of their dream city, that empathy with it um, engages them, I think, much more effectively than other techniques. And that's one of our real strengths with our users.